Welcome back to my channel, Crafty with Nordy. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to make this book cloth binder and also how to make the book cloth as well. Now for the book cloth, what you're going to need is some fabric. I'm using 100% cotton fabric and it's foiled on one side. And I got this fabric from Joann's about a year and a half ago. So I've had it for a while and I thought it'd be great to use for this project. Now you're also going to need some fusible Shearway interfacing. This is just the brand that I'm using. I haven't tried any other brand to do this, um, but I'm sure any other brand that does the same thing is gonna work fine. You will also need an iron and a damp cloth as well. Okay, now for the inside cover, I went ahead and used this Recollection brand shimmer paper. It's cardstock and it's got some pretty colors in there. I think it came out, it looks really pretty and it matches the fabric really well too. You're gonna need some really thick chipboard. Now this chipboard comes in 12 by 12 sheets. It's really thick, so I would recommend using box cutters to cut this. Um, I'm using my rotary cutters because that's just what I have right now along with my cutting mat and my fabric ruler. And it does give me a really clean cut. Um, you gotta go over it a few times and you gotta be extra careful though if that's what you're gonna use. Um, but I would recommend uh, box cutters for this one. You're going to need this binder mechanism and I get this off of Amazon and it comes in a pack of two and you're going to need a tool to create the holes and you're also gonna need a screwdriver to uh, screw in the, the hardware as well. Um, you'll need some book binding glue. I use Lineco, their natural pH adhesive um, for book binding and it works really well and you can get this off of Amazon also. Some really strong double-sided tape of your choice. Now I get this pack off of Amazon and it ranges from about a quarter inch wide up to an inch wide. It's a really big pack and I'll leave a link in the description below, but it's really good and really strong double-sided tape. Um, you're also going to need your cutting board to cut your cardstock. And I believe that's it. Um, I would recommend a, a pencil as well to make any marks that you're gonna need and a ruler. So if you're ready, let's get into it. Okay, so for the first uh, binder that I had done, I used the medium weight chipboard, which has a lot of give in it already. Um, so I switched it to this chipboard because it's thicker and it's stronger. I mean, it's got resistance, right? And when you add glue, it softens up that chipboard, causing it to you know want to warp and. Um, being that it's already very flexible, that one, uh, I switched over to this one because you can see it started to curve. And that's because once it, the glue touched it, it softened it, it's wet, you know? So I went ahead and switched to this one. I think it's gonna be better. Normally, I do use the medium weight chipboard, um, but I'm usually using this strong double-sided tape and so there's no warping or anything like that going on. But since I'm going to be using glue and a good amount of glue, I wanna go ahead and use something that's got, that's thicker, stronger, it's got more resistance, you know, it's harder. Um, I think that's gonna be the better bet, okay? Okay, so to do the book cloth, you're gonna take a piece of fabric and cut your fabric to uh, just a little bit more than what you actually need it to be, like maybe a quarter inch more than what you need it to be or something. And the fabric that I'm using here, it's foiled on one side. So that's not the side I wanna iron on. So we're gonna flip it over and we wanna iron on the back side of the fabric or the, the, the wrong side or whatever. 
and you want to get those creases out as best as you can because you don't want no creases in your book over your book because this is going to be the cover okay so just as best as you can get it out okay and then you want to get the interfacing and this is the one that i'm using you can get that at your craft store or walmart i think has it too and it comes in like a roll and it's got two sides to it so one side is smooth and the other side is textured and that's the side that has that glue on it so you want that textured side down to the back of your fabric okay and you want to cut this piece just a little bit smaller than your actual fabric and then you want to take a very thin cloth that's going to be able to withstand you know your iron and uh, you want to wet that cloth and then and this is just like a receiving blanket i think i had and so it's wet we wrung it out um probably a little bit more wet than i need it to be but you just want it to be damp and you want to place that over the top and then you want to take your iron and you just want to press it there you can hear that nice sizzle and you're going to do that there for a few seconds like it's i, I don't know maybe 10 15 seconds but i mean check it as you go along so this is going to take a, a couple minutes to do and you and personally i had to go over this several times so it took it took me a good probably five minutes because i kept making sure i had to go you know i kept going over it because i wanted to make sure my edges were sticking down and everything was sticking down and it wasn't bubbling or anything like that so if it's still bubbling mm -hmm. in certain spots like you can tell it's not sticking you just need to just continue to uh give it a few more seconds with the iron until it does that so i noticed i kept having to kind of do that in like random spots and make sure you're overlapping as well And then just keep checking it you know checking it as you go along so let's see so you can see if it's sticking or not so that teensy little edge there isn't but you can see it's it's sticking together so if you get pieces that are like that just a little bit bigger or if it's a piece it's a if it's a section you're going to cut off don't worry about it but for the most part you just want to make sure it's actually sticking and you want it to be smooth because otherwise you'll you'll see it, it'll look different it'll still be moving it'll bubble up kind of like this and you'll know okay that's not stuck down okay so you're going to keep going and doing this until You've done the whole thing and just keep checking it to see if you need to give it a little bit more time in those areas. Okay. So this is pretty much how you want it to look nice and smooth. Um, if you have a teeny bit of lifting on the edge and you know, you're going to cut that off. I wouldn't worry about that. Now I did this about a year and a half ago. And this is the fabric I use. This one's not foiled, but it's cotton fabric. And so you can see this is when it's all done. So I cut the edges and everything. And so it goes all the way up to the edge now. And you can see like, it looks like it's a bit porous, but those are, I think are the, just the dots from where that adhesive is on the back. But when I did this about a year and a half ago, um, after I was done and I placed my chipboard with my glue on it, I don't know if I just pressed it too hard and the glue seeped through. So I thought, you know, it wasn't a very good technique. It just, it didn't work. But um, after talking with my husband and I decided to give it another go because I thought maybe 
he was telling me, you know, maybe you pushed it too hard and kind of forced the glue through or, you know, maybe you used too much glue or something like that. And I wasn't like really sure what I had did, done and why it didn't work. So this time around, we just, we're doing, um, we're doing our steps a little bit carefully and to see if it's gonna help, you know, not pushing too hard and not, not giving any more glue than is necessary. Now, this is real book binding fabric that I ordered online um, from a company called Hollanders and they're really, really good. I'll leave them a link in the description below. And you can see, okay, just to kind of compare the fabrics, but on the back, the book binding fabric from Hollanders, that's like a paper it's really thin so that's so that the glue doesn't go through the fabric and you got like a nice clean finish so you can see this is not paper that interfacing it's it's different it does like it's still flexible the paper one is still very flexible because I use a really thin paper but um, it's still flexible and you'll see how we do it in the next steps um, when we start adding our chipboard to the back of this fabric. Now, like I said before, you're going to want to go ahead and start cutting off any of the excess now and make sure that your fabric is cut to the size that you need it. So I can cut a tad more off on the side and the bottom. So that's what I'm going to do because I don't want any excess anything that I don't need. So I'm taking about you know, between an eighth to a quarter of an inch off right here. All right, Let's see if this is what I like. Close enough. So you just want to balance it out from the top and the bottom and the sides just to make sure you got like a nice even little border. You know, it doesn't have to be exact, just as close as you're going to get it because that inside is going to be covered with paper anyways. So. I think this is pretty good. So our final cut for that is about 12 and 3 eighths by eight and a half is where we're at with our fabric. Okay. And so now we can start adding our glue. Now be careful with your glue here because like I said, I've gotten I got glue on my other one when I was first doing it on the back on accident because I, I kind of moved it and just went right into my glue. But any tiny bits of glue that is not a lot, after it dries, you could just scrape it off and you don't even see it. But if it's really saturated, it's like, forget it. You're gonna have an ugly stain. Okay, so just get your glue and a sponge. And I don't want to put too much. I'll add more if I need it. I'm just going from the center out.
I want a good amount on my edges, but not so much that it's going to be seeping everywhere. And I don't want it going through in case there's any teeny tiny porous little holes that I don't, you know, I'm not going to see. Or, like I said, I've had it happen already, doing it, making the book fabric this way. Um, so I don't know if I just used too much glue or if maybe I was pressing too hard. And so what I'm doing different is I'm really spreading it out, then trying not to use any more than is necessary. And it starts to get tacky pretty quick, which is good because that's what I want it to do but I don't want it to get tacky to, to the point where it's not gonna stick to what I'm putting it on. So. Okay. And it barely curves with the glue. The other one was curving dramatically with the glue and I wasn't even putting that much on there. Pushing super hard. I'm just lightly pressing it. And I'm not pushing hard with this either. I'm just lightly pressing it. And it wants to curve a little bit, but it, trust me, it's not doing it as dramatically as it was last time. Do your best to line those up. too hard. Just gonna check my other side, make sure I didn't get no glue coming through. I don't wanna press on that too much. Okay. forgot to cut a little bit of in. Just want to leave a little bit of spacing right here from your corner. Should have done that before I started gluing. Just going very carefully with this because I don't want to shove it through in case there's any little holes in that you know if like say the paper ripped or it's a little bit porous in one spot where the glue wasn't and you know
making sure it's pulled down good. Corners in. Checking it over. Still curves just slightly, but not as much as the other one was doing. So I'm going to put something light over this while it's still setting. This isn't super heavy, but it's flat. my piece for uh, my inside cover. Let's try to see what that looks like on camera. Hmm. I can't decide, I like them all. But since it's this is really light, maybe we're going with one of these over here. Maybe the green. I think the green's really pretty, so we'll just go with the green. And we'll get that all cut. Okay, so we're gonna do this in three separate pieces because I don't wanna deal with, you know, pieces kind of moving around due to tension. I'll know this piece is by itself onto this, this piece is by itself onto this, and even though this is going over it, these are already fixed. I don't know why it does a better job that way for me, why, but it does. Okay, okay so we're going to go ahead and just tape these with our double-sided tape. I'm going to go back to pressing this for a minute till that's till I'm done doing this. These pieces were cut at seven and a quarter by four and seven eighths. So two of those, and then the middle piece is three inches by seven and a quarter. taking all the tape off, or all the stuff off right away. I guess I'm, I'm fully committed now, so hopefully this goes on straight. And, cause I mean, you can always take off a little strip and then keep going, but I always seem to just like, not even think about that until I'm like, well, taking all the tape off. And then I'm like, well, I hope this goes on even and straight. And if it doesn't, oh well. But if you've taken all the tape off like me, or the paper off of the tape, just do your best to line it up with this back part of this chipboard. 
but if you're just gonna eyeball it and I wouldn't take all the tape off just because once it's down it wants to stay put Just do your best. It may not be perfect, but it'll look good. Committed. Make sure all that tape is pressed down good too so that it's not lifting up on you when you start taking them. Um, Taking that backing off. And press down those edges as best as you can. You really want that to stay down. And you can round these out a little bit, the paper, if you want to on those corners, just to kind of give it a little bit of a, I don't know, I think it would look better as a finished look. Just these little, a little bit of a rounding in there. Line up my creases and line up my top. I was curious how this was gonna, the tape was gonna stick to the actual fabric. So I wanna see how this is gonna hold up. This is kinda dirty. So if you're using the double-sided tape here over this fabric, if you're using fabric, um, press it down really well. If you're unsure, you can always add some glue to that edge. so good and I love that it didn't like barely even move there's not like I like the other one where it really curled out and I put something in between this to keep it open and flat and it's it's still wanting to curve on those corners so I definitely recommend using that thicker chipboard because it's just stronger and I mean, as soon as you get the glue on any of this chipboard, it softens it even more. So if it's already a flexible piece, it's gonna be even more flexible and, you know, and want to curve. And I like that this one, this one's still staying pretty good. So. so, so far so good, I think it looks coming along nice now this particular binder mechanism that I got this kit 
it didn't, I mean, I don't know if I would call it a kit because it didn't come with a tool to make your holes and, um, and whatnot, you know? And I think it should, it would have been cool if it had a little bit of a template as well that came with it. So you can just kind of put it down, make your marks, whether it be on the front cover, the inside cover or the back in here. So then at least I could see that I'm centering my holes because this one, when I put it in here, I was just kind of eyeballing it, which was hard to do because there's pattern on this paper. So it was kind of like messing with my eyes and I couldn't really t see the crease line that I had made to be a visual for me, a, a guide for me. And so you see on the back, it's just a little bit off. It's not centered at all. So, um, it's just extra work now, you know, I got to measure the holes and then I got to center them where I want. And then I have to find a tool to make the holes to go through this really thick chipboard and this fabric. So it's kind of a bummer that this particular, I wouldn't call it a kit, um, mechanism, whatever, didn't come with, didn't make a complete kit like I would have liked it to have done. Okay, so I want this to be centered. So I'm gonna have to do it from the outside in. So this spine is an inch and a quarter. Or an inch and an eighth, actually. I have to use the awl to make my holes. And I mean, I hope I got it better than I did last time. come up quite a bit with it. Those fit snug now. Okay. And you just line those up. Where you need them onto the. And you could see down in there that it comes out a little bit right here. So you're going to have a gap. So just keep that in mind.
So I can feel it start to get snug, but then it doesn't tighten past that. So that's about it. You're not gonna get it any tighter because there's nothing to hold this steel while you tighten that. Like I tried to put pressure on it with my finger, see if that helped, but it didn't. It's still moving, so. I'm gonna get that, but it, it worked better lining it up on the back using a pencil. I mean, it's not perfect, perfect, but that's okay. It still looks good. And I think it's gonna be okay. Um, I'm wondering if I need to add a strap to this to keep it closed. There's still a little bit of room in there. I'm not completely centered because I could see there's a little bit of room, but. Um, I think over time it's going to stay closed. And I also have the corner, the book corners. And I'll leave a link in the description below for that one also. And they're really big. So if you're using like thicker chipboard, oh, it's a little bit stuck in there. Um, and I hammer these down because I don't have the, I tried to use the pliers to just like the jewelry pliers to press it down. And it just left these like big dents the first time I did it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them on and then just keep it on the board here and then I'll hammer it down. scuffing up the outside. I think those look cute. All right, so just to recap, um, for the fabric that I used, it was the Novelty Foil pre-cut fabric from Joann's. It's normally about 10 bucks, but I got it like really cheap, like 297, and this was probably a year and a half, two years ago. Um, it's 100% cotton. It's called the Ombre Bright White Foil, and it's one yard. And um, and then I use the interfacing, which is the fusible sheer weight interfacing um, from Pellon. And like I said, I tried it before, and it just didn't work out. The glue had seeped through and everything and it just didn't turn out well. So I thought, you know, I'm not gonna try it again. But after talking to my husband and he was like, maybe you put too much glue, maybe you pressed it too hard and made it go through and all that stuff. So I gave it another try. You just follow the instructions that are already on here and, um, and that's it, you know? And it's a little bit more tedious because sometimes it doesn't stick in certain spots and wants to bubble, so you gotta go extra over those spots. But um, all in all, it turned out really well. So I think just changing our technique a little bit with less glue and letting it barely start to get tacky before we, push, we put it onto the actual fabric and then just lightly pressing it down, not pushing it really hard just lightly pressing it down and then keeping something lightweight on top of it for a little bit while it sets. Um, I think made all the difference um, because we don't have any glue seeping out anywhere like I had before. And because that happened the first time, I was like, oh, this doesn't work. I'm not gonna do that. And so um, I'm glad I tried it again because I have tons of fabric um, 
that I got in these like squares or you know like a yard roll or I have these little packs like this and it's like what am I going to do with them like I'm not going to make a ton of doll stuff with them like I did that was the intention was to make some doll stuff with it for my daughter which I did but this is just there's still so much more left over and I got such a good deal on it too and so this is just another thing I can do with that stuff because I didn't get this paper and this fabric and all this stuff at the same time you know this is stuff that I've either had for a while um not intending to use them together and so um I I was just sitting there and I'm not a big sewer I only I sew very little and so looking at this and thinking you know what can I do with this fabric you know what I mean and so I was like I'll give it another attempt and because I, I had very little fabric that I actually, uh, book fabric that I actually actually purchased from, um, I think it's Hollanders. And I only had a few sheets of this and it's really nice. And, and they have like a lot of really pretty colors and stuff to choose from. But I was like, well, I have all this fabric. Maybe I'll try it again try the book fabric again so then I'm not wasting all that fabric that I do have I'm actually putting it to use and it came out really nice I like the idea that we use the thicker chipboard because it's not bowing or anything like that it's holding up nice um I think it came out great I like the sheer paper I've, I have a lot of this sheer paper and I don't even um I don't do a lot with it and so this kind of just worked out where it went together you know with this pastel foil um fabric here and these little corner uh book corners here i actually got them on amazon um it's a good size pack 160 pack with three different colors you got the silver the gold and the bronze so that went nicely with the the binder mechanism in here i wish this had been a whole kit where it had something to make the holes and a template maybe to line up to you know when you're putting this together and stuff like that, that would have been nice um, considering that these, it's like 10 bucks for just getting two of these. So um, I would have liked that to have been a more of a actual kit. Um, but other than that, I think everything turned out really well. Um, we used the tape on the inside and it seems to be holding nicely on the edges with that fabric. And I'll leave a link in the description below for um, that double-sided tape that I use um, as well. So everything I'll, I used in this video will be in the description below. So I hope you like this video. Thank you so much for watching. I think there's just tons you can do with this, you know, picture album, planner, budget binder. I mean, you name it, you know, to store your stickers, you know, you can put sketchbook paper in here, whatever you want to use it for. I think there's just so much that it can be used for and it looks really really nice it lays flat and it's not opening up it's it's staying flat and when it's open it wants to kind of open up but i think over time like if you have this put away and there's something on each side it's keeping it that way eventually it's just gonna stay that way but standing up it's gonna want to open okay so but sitting down it stays flat just fine um you can add uh some pockets in here if you want to um, you know, dress it up however you like. This is just, you know, just a simple way of doing it. Um, I think everything just turned out really well with this one. Um, yeah, I like it a lot. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you go out and, and make a few of these. And um, I hope this video was very informative. I hope it was helpful. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And um, as always, if you haven't already, don't forget to uh, like, share, and subscribe, and um, turn on that notification bell so you're notified anytime I put out a new video. I normally put out a video about once every week, um, depending on you know if I'm too busy or not. Um, it's kind of been a hectic couple of weeks, so I was a little late on getting this video out there, but I hope it's something that you really want to make. It's just like our other book videos, but you know, we just... We just had a little extra uh, something special in there on how to how to use that fabric and what else we can do with um, extra fabric and whatnot. So um, 
that's it for this video. Um, I hope you really liked it. And as always, thank you. And um, I'll catch you on the next video. Have a good one.